what you think we've got a beautiful day you might as well show it yep. that is a very very beautiful day and it is a gorgeous day so this is great now because I was, I was looking Pat Nolan like Paul Byrne is one of those names you, you can kind of find a few yeah. of them online and I was thinking oh this is a, obviously the very famous Pat Nolan is on Fair City and a million different you know uh, uh, productions on screen and then on uh, uh, acted with as I mentioned Rose Henderson brought the lovely yeah. uh, you know uh, don't forget your cornflakes what's it put on your cornflakes yeah take That's off your the, cornflakes take off your cornflakes there you go the old memory but you're also multi-talented. You're also a great. There's uh, no beginning to my a great talent, director. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting the tide yeah, coming right at us. It's, <laughs> it's a sign. And now it's me. And now it's me. Yeah, so on. we should we should say the tide. You're directing Tara uh, Marie Lovett, uh, an old friend of yours, has written yeah. it. You've got um, uh, T J and Ivy played by yeah. by, um, by and Killian and, and, and Killian Fun. Island, yeah. Yes, they're strangers on a beach. Yeah. And they decide they could help each other out here in a Hitchcockian pact. Yeah, well, it's kind of a uh, film noir type <laughs> scenario. Right. Uh, yeah, they, they, they are two people who are trapped and yeah. uh, they come to the conclusion, well, he comes to the conclusion that maybe I should say they can help each other. And right. That begins a big adventure for them. Now, I think it's a good <laughs> signal to, to, the, to the average Joe that what we're dealing with here is a darkly comic tale because once you've got... In a revenge plot of any sort, in any kind of murder, once you involve a Nissan Micra and a dead goldfish, I think you know you're not in the realm of a deep, dark Hitchcock. It is no. a bit more tongue-in-cheek than that. It's tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. It's a black comedy, so you are laughing maybe when you shouldn't be. But she <laughs> writes very funny dialogue and sets right. up very funny scenarios, and you have to laugh. Nice. Uh, so young Killian um, plays several characters, and um, he also plays a, a local guard. Ah, who would be uh, a few sandwiches short of a picnic. He's obsessed you know with I mean? TV game shows. He is, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, as many people are these days. As they are. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and one of them is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, which <laughs> started boom. back last night, I think. Ah, okay. So it's come around again, so we wait long enough for it to come around again. Now, the, the idea of, of for, for an actor who, who would be, I would imagine at this stage, fairly comfortable on, in front of a camera or up on stage, do you find the directing is, is is a joy? Is it is it is it, a, is it actually quite wearing? Because you're, you're so aware of what an actor goes through that you're um, yeah. yeah you're sensitive yeah. to their egos and sensitive to their needs and all the rest. Well, I I, I always found that um, I haven't done a lot of directing for the very fact that when you're acting. You're looking after your own part and yourself yeah. within the play, but when you're directing, you're looking after all the actors and all the characters, and all the stage management, and all the lighting cues, and all the sound cues, and all the get-ins, and all the get-out. So it's quite a, a lot of work, <laughs> to be honest with you. And um, but uh, Anne Russell asked me to to direct this, and I know Anne, and I've worked with her before, so uh, I knew uh, it would be quality work anyway, and the play right. itself turned out to be a little gem and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it I mean it was tough because it's a new play so it goes through a process it's been knocking around for about a year right and 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 the, uh, they would do uh, readings of it and then Tara would go away and and, and uh, rewrite it and that kind of stuff and then we had a luxury which I never worked with before uh, certainly as a director of a dramaturg uh, okay. in the new theatre uh, right. Pamela and the Queen and she knows the play inside out and she looks at all the dramatic potentials she looks at all the the plots and subplots within the play she looks at the characters she looks at the time she looks at the kind mm. of uh you know ju ju just the logic of it so so it was great to have her as like a middle person between myself and tara uh so if i had a problem about what well, no i could call tara yeah, to be honest yeah. with you. there was no big kind of um you know but but it was handy just to for her to express it to Tara in such a way that it made perfect sense and she could um, pass her on then to me. So that worked yeah. well. So that's you, an interesting... You, you say dramaturg, like I know what that is. Did you say dramaturg? Is that a term? Yeah, a, yeah. That? A lot of the big theatres like the Abbey and certainly the Druid and all would have it. And it, 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 it's, it, it's came in now in the past few years now. It'd be a look at European thing, so to speak. Right. But it's basically somebody who's across the whole play and looks okay. at it in the nitty gritty and looks at it like a showrunner or you know a little yeah maybe. They're, they're right across it so they, right. they know it intimately inside out kind of thing Great. and and all you have to do is ask and, and they know exactly 
you know, and you know the draft that that scene came in, and you know what page that's on. So it was an amazing facility to have. Now she wasn't sitting on my lap or sitting beside me now all all through the rehearsals. Well, now. that's that's frowned upon now anyway. Well, that's so, frowned yeah. upon. Yeah, well, right, an old-fashioned way. <laughs> There goes the career. So, but anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you would say that um, um, we've got a play here now that would be perfect for anybody who's in a relationship who may just feel, I've actually grown tired of how he holds that pen or I don't like the way she munches her cornflakes. Yeah. This would be the perfect play to bring someone to just to sprite them up and say, you know what, this could happen. If you don't just buck up and get your act together. I know this is an anniversary date, but I'm just telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, kind of, that's a sideline now. That could be interesting. It could be a yeah. Valentine's special. Yeah, I just like a think. Marriage <laughs> guidance kind of a thing. You know what I mean? And. Uh Oh yeah, I can yeah. see that. I can see that. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should we should give a shout out as you say. It, it's always a team effort. And John Gunning does some video projection here. And, and yeah, is it, uh, yeah, yeah. Deirdre o O'Connell, Deirdre. I'm not sure the lady who does uh, the lighting. There's um, is it light design or set oh, design? Kathy. Kathy. There we go. Yeah, I'm getting my names mixed and up. And then there was Mary as well. Did the, this uh, stage? I mean, the whole huh. thing, as you can imagine, was to try and set a beach on a stage in a small theatre. Uh, right. You know what I mean? So right. uh, we accomplished that in a very interesting way. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to come and see see how we got on, you know. Boom. But there is a lot of objections and some lovely photographs by uh, an Arclo, um photographer who I know called Donald Power. And okay. He gave us some of his uh, photographs. Right. And then we got some lovely uh, swimming shots as well from... Uh, up in Scary's way kind of thing the north side so that would be interesting well, it's, it's amazing what you can really that, that combination in, in theatre that you can create worlds and you can use other mediums to oh, yeah. ultimately it's about the performance oh, and yeah. the feeling I mean, it's but, so bloody easy now in some ways yeah. when you think of the old days you know what I mean I, 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 I was telling the guys uh, when I started out in the Focus uh, 17, 18, 18 maybe I don't know Right. 18, well, um, you know the, the first job I had that I got paid for as an actor was I was doing a small part in Alice in Wonderland but I was also operating the sound and the sound was on the reel to reel you know <laughs> and then the big you know evolution revolution came when we went on to cassettes oh, and then we went moly. on to mini discs <laughs> and now it's all done digitally so you yeah. know you know what I mean it's all done uh, yeah so it's all quite changed now and it's all for the good in many ways obviously you can have fun with, with some of the old methods and it creates its own kind of atmosphere but the fact that you have very reliable we'll say um, you know tools at your at your disposal yeah. to create these false worlds and, and just evoke like as you say putting a beach in a, in a small theatre is uh, exactly yeah is that's suddenly... the challenge so you have to try and get a flavour of it I mean you're not going to and Pete of course uh, from the whale did some lovely sound effects for us as well so that right. created just all that kind of stuff in the background here now and just general car horns, Nissan car horns. I've been with Pete at some stuff. parties, and about four in the morning, when he's lying on the floor, he can do some incredible whale sounds. I've heard him do some incredible. <laughs> the it's, beach whale, now. yeah, yeah. The beach so, whale yeah. Wasn't me now. <laughs> Uh, he does. He does it on the water ones, but very natural. Very, it sounds very believable. Yeah, it's very. very Greenpeace have knocked on our door more than once, trying to figure out what's some, going on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, save the well. <laughs> <laughs> now we we should touch upon the fact that a lot of people will know you from Fair City. I, I'm guessing when well, a career and, and, and young Phelan Drew is from from the town as well, and, and he's the first man to tell you a career is is it's it's a, it's a lifetime commitment in the many ways that you never know from year to year. You know how much work you're going to get and, and exactly what the work's going to be, and sometimes it's it's an absolute joy. Sometimes it's just work. It's a feast or a famine. You know what I mean? Right. Seriously, and I say that to young people because I do some teaching up in Sallinogan College in the Performing Arts School there, and um, you know it, it, it's a feast or a famine. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, at the moment I'm, I'm on a bit of a run, which is fantastic. So uh, this is one of the best first quarters I've had now Boom. in a long time Touchstone you know? Touch whatever stone. we're doing <laughs> and uh, no it, it, it's just that it's always a bad old time because after Christmas you have the pantomime still running so all the theatres are tied up right. and then people don't come out then until about spring you know what I mean so yeah. it starts to kind of get going so but uh, as I say this year I've been doing some adjudication on the amateur circuit and stuff like that so um that, that that's so it's been very good and of course directing the play kept me going as well nice. and uh, there's always a few bits and pieces in there I noticed that you've, you've moved deep into the Wicklow countryside you're down in Avoca Avoca right yeah, is that, the, are you finding a spiritual quality. or just, just purely that you, you like the, the, the air and the, and the, and the um, people well, and well having grown up in, in Dublin in the concrete jungle of Ballyfermot and some of that uh, and Blue Bell and some of that it's it quite a big change you know right. I never was country oriented I don't recall ever having any country cousins or I remember kids in school coming back after the holidays saying I was down on my uncle's farm or auntie's farm and 
never, <laughs> never had any connection with. It. I used to play football on the road for my summer holidays, so that's what I did. So what changed, or what what sort of triggered the the the, the, uh, the move? Well, when I got married, we we moved over to the north side, you know, uh, of the Grange Garment. Okay. And we were there and. The lads were growing up and they were in the local school and that was all going well and we went out on a drive one it was actually in Easter Sunday with some friends visiting from America and uh, we came across this site and this place so we started to look into the idea and we said yeah it's only a million miles away it's a bit of a drive and all that stuff but mm. uh, yeah I was in RT at the time and my wife works up in Dunleary so yeah we can do this we, you know, we, so we started to look around then and one thing led to another so I don't think we could go back now you know we're there 15 years now so yeah, taking root. I suppose the very last thing that is, um, and a lot of people in, watching this will be curious to know, how come Greystones wasn't good enough for you? Ooh! <laughs> Saucer and milk for Paul. Uh, <laughs> no, I love Greystones. Um, I remember coming out here, the first time coming out here, when the young lad and the young lads joined the local football team, St. Patrick's of Avoca. Right. And uh, do you used to play, play on the hilltop? Yeah, well, the over, view, over, yeah? that's right, over right there now where Marina yeah. <coughs> Village has sort of been built. There was a Darcy's Field, it was a great. Uh, was that it? Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. High, high altitude kind of stuff. You need oh, you hit that ball high, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Once the wind but, uh, catches it, the seagull gets it. Yeah, no, it was always quite nice. It was always quite pleasant and quite nice. No, I just don't know. I just, just Avoca again. You know, and we're in yeah. a little place called uh, Connery. Connery okay. is local centre. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's quiet, and but there's people around, so I don't know about like total isolation, but uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know. Also, Grayson's is too expensive to buy in, so just so you know. Yeah, it's, it's pre, yeah. Probably, yeah, pre Celtic Tiger yeah, yeah. actually. There yeah, yeah, go. yeah. But, anyway, yeah. but uh, <laughs> maybe when I grow up, I can move. The there country. you go. Well, listen, we wish you the best of luck. We're going to have a. We'll, we'll obviously remind people as it gets closer uh, to uh, to the tide uh, uh, on uh, being at the whale. But um, yeah, and we look forward to now whatever you're up to next. I know you're a busy man, as you say, but um, I would think uh, we'd love to see you on the stage too. We've had you with the beautiful oh, Rose Henderson but um, a great old time yeah, yeah but, but well done and uh, hopefully we'll catch you soon fantastic <laughs> cheers man